Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight I'm out in the Nevada desert and I got a story from you from Thomas. This is part two of Thomas's encounter that he had. He had a second encounter at night in the Honey Island Swamp. And this time it was with his cousin who doubted him and now he's a believer. Very frightening. That's next. All right, you guys, I am out in the Nevada desert here. It is just some really wide open country. And I love it out here. Uh, we got a little bit of snow up in the mountain behind me here. The night before last, it snowed up here. Had some good rain down in town. And uh, so we got a little bit of snow up here, but the Sierra's got a lot of snow. So today's beer is called California Honey Blonde Ale. That's from the Pizza Port Brewing Company, and they're out of Carlsbad, California. And that is a 16 ouncer with a big mouth on it. Oh! <laughs> Little sudsy. And I also got a clear glass here to drink out of. Check this out. It's plastic too, so I don't have to worry about breaking it. It's a stemless wine glass, that's what it is. So we can at least see the honey blonde. Look at that. Oh yeah. Wow. That is golden. Golden honey blonde. In Carlsbad, California. I believe that's Southern California. Wow, that is smooth. That is really good, really smooth finish to it. And it's it's very honey-like. It's not super clear like an amber, but it's it's almost opaque, but it's great looking color to it. So yeah, and it says, good beer brings good cheer, is what it says. So speaking of cheer, cheers. So our story comes to us from Thomas. He was in the previous video where he had an encounter in the Honey Island Swamp of Southern Mississippi, Mississippi, Louisiana. The Pearl River formed the border between Louisiana and Mississippi. And on either side of the Pearl River is the Honey Island Swamp, three to seven miles wide, about 20 miles long, really a vast wilderness of swampland, backwater, bayous, islands, really good fishing for bass, crappie, sunfish, feral hogs, deer, and migratory birds, alligators even, and the Honey Island Monster. And that's what our story is about. Thomas wanted to do some squirrel hunting with his father, his cousin, and his uncle. So they got in the boat, and they went up the Pearl River quite a ways to their houseboat. They docked their houseboat, anchored it near an island, and so they could go up and down the river pretty quickly in the boat. And then when they got up to the houseboat, they had a nice place to stay, warm and comfortable, even had some food there for them. It's a great idea, and it was basically their remote portable cabin that they had in the Honey Island Swamp. Interesting, got a bunch of birds flying overhead. It's almost like they're migrating or something. Hear that? <laughs> so because they were in the houseboat, they always left some food in there for future adventures and trips like they were on. So they went to the pantry, checked it out, and they found a can of chili, some beans, some rice, a can of corn, and they thought, hey, we could put this together and make some of our specialty goulash. They were putting this together, and it's really good. They really enjoy it, but you have to be careful how much you actually eat because you could get into trouble, gastronomically speaking, according to Thomas, 
And while they were doing this, Thomas said, he had a suggestion. He said, what if we went over to Black Creek and we hunted us a rabbit and had some fried rabbit to add to this? Those islands, because it was high water, the animals would get trapped on there. And there's always rabbit, coon, possum, deer even, on these islands that they could easily hunt. They had a couple of shotguns in the houseboat. And so they all thought that'd be a good idea. So they got into the boat and they went up river and into the Black Creek backwater and got on an island. And Dan, which is Thomas's cousin, and Dan was the one who teased him and mocked him and ridiculed him the most about his first encounter that he had with Nick earlier that year. Other than that, Dan was a really good guy. He was a really big guy. And Thomas said they called him Big Dan because he looked like an NFL linebacker. Just this really big guy, but a really nice guy. So they landed the boat on the bank of an island in Black Creek. Thomas and Dan each got out and they each had a shotgun. Thomas had a flashlight as well. And he told his dad, we'll just be a few minutes. You guys stay right here. And so his dad and his uncle stayed in the boat just waiting for them. They'd done this before. This was nothing new for them. They knew they could get a rabbit pretty quickly. They're heading off into the thick brush. The sun is going down. They go about a hundred yards or so. And Thomas is surprised. He doesn't see any game, nothing. They pushed on through the thick brush into a clearing. Still, there was no game, no coon, possum, rabbit, nothing. And they found it extremely unusual given that with the high water, the game is concentrated on any given island at this time of year. They pushed on through the thick brush again, and then they got into another clearing. It was eerily void of any game. No birds, no night sounds, nothing. It was dead quiet. It was really starting to creep them out a little bit. There was nothing going on in this island. They proceeded on in the thick brush. It was pitch black out. The stars were thick. You could see them just crystal clear above them. They're going through the thick brush and then Dan taps Thomas on the shoulder and says, what was that? And Thomas says, what was what? And Dan said, I heard something moving in the water behind us. So Thomas and Dan both stopped and then Thomas was listening, thinking maybe he was going to hear a deer or a hog swimming out to the island. And then Big Dan said, that, did you hear that? And then Thomas heard off in the distance what sounded like a logging truck taking off in like a low gear and going really slow and then letting out the clutch kind of late. And he said to Dan, when you hear things like that, it's usually from a long ways off because of high water, all that water carries sound really easily in the swamp here. They started walking again, Thomas out front, flashlight shining it in the thick brush, no game. And he was starting to have these thoughts about his previous encounter from nine months earlier. And it was, wasn't too far away, like three, 400 yards towards Black Creek is where this first encounter happened. So continuing on through the thick brush and then Dan says again, did you hear that? And he was, Thomas was starting to get aggravated now thinking he's never gonna get a rabbit. We wanna get out of here. They're at this point where Thomas was like, I just wanna get a rabbit and get out of here. Right then, they both heard this distinct, familiar growl that Thomas had heard earlier. And this time it was much closer. You gotta remember they're in a remote swamp in Southern Mississippi on an island at night. And now they hear this growl, very frightening. Thomas told Dan this was the animal that had charged him and Nick previously and that they needed to leave and leave now. They continued on through the thick brush and as they were going through the thick brush, it let out another loud growl roar and they started walking faster. And then they could hear it tearing through the brush. 
straight towards them. And Thomas said, run, now. And they both ran. Thomas was the only one at the light, and they were running fast through the thick brush. And over the noise, Thomas could hear what sounded like this animal gaining on them. And he was really concerned because Dan was right behind him, and he thought this thing could just grab Dan at any moment. So Thomas stops, pivots, and Dan, big Dan, was in perfect sync with him. They both had their guns and they raised them up and in a split second they looked around and they could hear this growl roar and they both had their guns aimed about eight feet high where they heard this sound from. The animal is just out of view in the thick brush. He couldn't see any eye shine, but he could see its form, just an outline of its form as he shined the light on it. And it seemed to be protecting its eyes from the flashlight. And he was thinking it had to be nocturnal because nocturnal animals gather more light in their eyes and so they're more sensitive to light. The creature was in the thick brush just growling and standing there but protecting its eyes. And then Thomas and Dan both simultaneously started slowly backing up. And they got to the edge of this clearing and then Thomas said, run. And they ran as fast as they could with Big Dan right behind Thomas and they ran through the remaining thick brush down to where the boat was and his dad and uncle were waiting for them. When they got to the boat, Thomas jumped in first. He ran all the way to the back of the boat, grabbed the Q-beam light, shined it back up towards the brush, expecting the animal to pop out at any moment. Big Dan was busy scurrying to get the boat ready to launch at the front of the boat. Thomas was barking out orders for his dad to start the motor up and get us out of there and for his uncle to sit down. Right then, Thomas's dad and his uncle were like protesting, like, what is this all about? What's going on, you guys? And right then, Thomas realized this thing was no longer chasing them. And so he explained to his dad, they were being chased by an animal, this creature, and he believes it was the same creature that had pursued him and Nick previously, nine months earlier. His dad had some choice words for him and he was really upset. According to Thomas, sounds like he didn't believe them at all. And Thomas was realized, yeah, there's nothing going on in the forest right now. And then his dad said, and why were you in the water at the end of the island? I heard you walking around in the water. And Thomas said, what are you talking about? His dad explained that after they had left, about a minute later, the end of the island, they could hear something come through the brush and now it was walking in the water towards them. And Thomas said, that was not us. We never went in the water. And then Thomas's dad said, yes, you were. He was adamant that they had walked in the water. Thomas said, no, we did not. And he took the light and he shined it down on his legs and he revealed that his pants were dry and his boots were dry, bone dry. And his dad looked at him confused because he knew he had heard something walking in the water towards the boat. They got the motor started. They started working their way back towards the houseboat. It was a quiet trip. They, nobody said anything. It was just so much chaos. And then they just, everyone is processing what had happened to themselves. They got to the houseboat. They had some time to just let things settle down. And then Big Dan came back to Thomas and he said, Thomas, I was wrong. I believe you now after what had happened. And I'm sorry that I ridiculed you and made fun of you and Nick. And for Thomas, that was sweet reprieve is what he said. That he would have at least somebody believe him after all that he'd been through. They grew up in this swamp and they knew this country really well and they never had any reference of anything like this ever happening outside of this first encounter that Thomas had. About three months later, Big Dan, who had lived next to Thomas at the edge of the swamp, decided to move his family about 40 miles away to what Big Dan called civilization. He lives there to this day and as far as Thomas knows he's never went back to the swamp. 
Although this event was extremely frightening, Thomas found some relief in knowing that the one who doubted and ridiculed him the most now believed and understood what he had been through. And his father, who was skeptical, now doubted his own skepticism about what happened. And little did Thomas know that in the distant future, his father was going to start believing after having his own encounter. And that is where we are ending tonight as the sun has gone completely down and I got to hike out of here. <laughs> My car is just over there in the juniper somewhere. So not a big deal, but thank you for watching you guys. We got a part three coming up about Thomas's father who now has an encounter along the Pearl River in the Honey Island Swamp. So that is going to be next as I always say. So thank you for watching, you guys. I appreciate you guys watching. As I always say, I always say that, and I do. I appreciate all your wonderful comments, and it's encouraging, inspiring for me as I go out here into the wild and <laughs> tell stories in the dark. And so I appreciate that. And if you like stories about the strange, unexplained, and things that go bump in the night, like and subscribe. Also, if you have your own story, please email it to basecampchris2 at gmail.com. I'll take a look at it and see what we can do. And I'm hearing some coyotes off in the distance. I just heard a coyote on the next ridge over there. Pretty cool. So, all right, guys, take care and keep hiking.